My name is Joseph Studevant. I'm the Assistant Director of Program Services for York County Youth Advocate Programs and a deacon at the Shiloh Baptist Church of York, Pennsylvania. Today, I'm going to be introducing you to Booker T. Washington. Born to a slave in Virginia in 1856, Booker Talaferro Washington had little chance for an education early on. Booker's first exposure to education was from the outside of a schoolhouse near the plantation. Looking inside, he saw children his age seated at desk and reading books. He wanted to do what those children were doing, but he was a slave, and it was illegal to teach slaves to read and write. Even after the Civil War, Booker and his mother were very poor. At nine years old, Booker went to work in a salt mine with his stepfather instead of going to school. Booker's mother noticed his interest in learning and got him a book from which he learned the alphabet and how to read and write basic words, getting up nearly every morning at 4 a.m. to practice and study before work. At the age of 16, Booker left home and walked 500 miles to Hampton Normal Agricultural Institute in Virginia, working odd jobs along the way to support himself. He convinced administrators to let him attend the school and took a job as a janitor to help pay his tuition. The school's founder and headmaster, General Samuel C. Armstrong, discovered the hardworking boy and offered him a scholarship. And in 1875, Booker T. Washington graduated from Hampton with high marks. He taught at his old grade school and attended Wayland Seminary in Washington, D.C., and in 1879, returned to Hampton to teach. In 1881, when the Alabama legislator approved $2,000 for a colored school, the Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, now known as Tuskegee University, General Armstrong was asked to recommend a white man to run the school, but instead recommended Booker T. Washington. Classes were first held in an old church while Washington traveled all over the countryside promoting the school and raising money. Under Booker T. Washington's leadership, Tuskegee became a leading school in the country. After his death, it had more than 100 well-equipped buildings, 1,500 students, a 200-member faculty teaching 38 trades and professions, and nearly $2 million in endowment. Washington put much of himself into the school's curriculum, stressing the virtues of patience, enterprise, and thrift. He taught that economic success for African Americans would take time, but he believed that if African Americans worked hard and obtained financial independence and cultural advancement, they would win acceptance and respect from the larger community. In 1901, President Theodore Roosevelt even invited Booker T. Washington to the White House, making him the first African-American to be so honored. Both President Roosevelt and his successor, President William Howard Taft, used Washington as an advisor on racial matters. Also an author, speaker, and political advisor, Booker T. Washington remained the head of Tuskegee Institute until his death on November 14, 1915, at the age of 59. Booker T. Washington was a righteous hustler who believed in strong work ethic, setting goals, and sticking to them. That's a, that's a lesson that I think is still relevant for our young people today. <laughs>